Good morning, my name is Priya Knutsen and today I will be talking to you about HIV AIDS in Egypt and the stigma that is associated with HIV in Egypt. So first I want to explain to you why I'm interested in this topic in Egypt of all places. And I know some of you are kind of confused about where I'm from because I keep talking in Arabic and I'm kind of American somehow. But actually I am American, but I've been living in Egypt for the last three years. I first went to Egypt after high school to spend a summer living with a host family and studying Arabic. And after I went home, I found that I missed Egypt so much, everything about it, and I missed living there so much that I actually decided to transfer to the American University in Cairo and finish my degree there. So for this reason, I decided that I want to give back to this country that has given me so much, and that is why I want to do this, my project in Egypt. So now that you understand why I want to do this in Egypt, why HIV AIDS? My first experience with HIV AIDS was in India. I spent a summer working in local communities and in slum areas, fighting stigma and spreading awareness among marginalized communities. During my internship, I was really impressed with the NGO and the employees there who dedicated their lives to advocating for marginalized communities such as female sex workers and men having sex with men and injecting drug users. They took the time to dedicate their whole lives to this cause when other people would more easily just kind of ignore these groups. It was easier for them to do so. And I really admired their compassion and I hope that I can do something similar in my lifetime. And at one point during my internship, someone asked me, what are they doing in Egypt to fight HIV AIDS? What, what kind of projects are, are being undertaken? And actually, I, I was completely surprised and I had no idea. I had, I had never heard of anyone with HIV. I had never heard anyone talking about it. And actually, I couldn't even imagine talking about it in Egypt, given the very conservative nature of the community. I mean, if I was to talk to one of my friends about a topic like this, they'd probably have a heart attack or be really shocked. So I decided that when I went back to Egypt, I was going to look into this issue and see what the status of HIV is in Egypt. I found out that actually the prevalence is very low in Egypt. It's less than 0.1% of the population, which equates to approximately 11,000 people. So that seems like not a lot, right? That's, that's okay. I mean, Egypt has 80, 000, 80 million people, and so 11,000 is not a very high number. But actually, according to UNAIDS, if nothing is done to prevent the spread of HIV in Egypt, these numbers could increase significantly in the coming years. And that's why it is absolutely critical that there's something done to fight HIV in Egypt. I started to become involved with an organization called Care International Egypt and their project called Increasing Corporate Engagement in HIV AIDS in Egypt. We work to spread awareness and to fight the stigma in, in Egypt. And I started to learn a lot about the stigma and I was really surprised the extent to which it influenced the, com the community and the extent to which it served as an obstacle to progress and to preventing the spread and talking about this issue. So now I want to show you a short video that can further explain this issue. اطلع برا اخرج برا ده غضب الله عليك ما ينفعش تعيش هنا ما ينفعش اخرج برا بيتي اخرج برا الشغل اللي احسن تعدينا لا انت ابني ولا عرفك مش انت ابني ولا عرفك الكلام ده هو اللي حامل فيروس الايدز بيسمعه كل يوم والكلام ده هو اللي بيقتله مش المرض المريض هو مريض محتاج مننا الحب والرعاية مهما كان سبب مرضه ومهما كان المرض ومهما كان المرض مهما كان المرض ومهما كان المرض So now I want to ask you a question what would you do if your brother or sister told you that they had HIV or AIDS? And I know there's a lot of parents in the room. What would you do if your child told you that they had HIV AIDS? Would you stand by them or would you abandon them? In Egypt, a person living with HIV can be abandoned by their employers, 
by doctors even, they can be refused health care. They can be abandoned by their communities, their friends, and even their families. Since the 1980s, since the outbreak of the AIDS epidemic uh, worldwide, HIV has been associated with sex, and this is one of the main reasons why it is so highly stigmatized. It has been linked to the idea of perversion and that those who are infected with HIV are infected because of their own personal responsibility and their own immoral actions. There is also the notion, unfortunately, that they're being punished and that it's their own fault that this happened and there's nothing that can be done. So how can you work to change a problem like this when it's so difficult to talk about it? It's so taboo and, that, and it's so deeply ingrained in the minds of the community. How are you supposed to deal with this? Or are you just supposed to not deal with it? Well, my initiative is hoping to actually deal with this in a small way if I can. So now I'd like to tell you a bit about it. It has two parts. The first part will be an online campaign targeted towards students in Cairo, and I will also have a campaign in my university. I think that even though the general population is not uh, part of the high-risk group, it's very important to spread the awareness among the general population to decrease the stigma. And the second part of my initiative, which is more exciting for me, is a workshop which will be held hopefully next month, inshallah, for refugees living in Cairo. And I chose refugees as my target group because they are, while they are not the most at-risk group in Egypt, the most at-risk groups are men having sex with men and the injecting drug users. They are, a, they are a vulnerable group because of their situation. They are more likely to engage in some kind of behaviors that would lead to them contracting the disease. And for this reason, it is also very important to target vulnerable populations. So right now I have a partnership with an NGO called STAR, which teaches English to refugees in Cairo. And I used to work there actually, so it's kind of convenient. And um, my hope is to, through facilitation from staff members of UNHCR and UNAIDS in Cairo, and also some other NGOs, we'll have an awareness session for 20 to 25 refugees. And these sessions will be voluntary. So I will go to the classes first to get refugees who are willing to come to the training and then hold the training and workshop for them. And my hope is that eventually, after they take the training, they will go back to their English class and they can, in a kind of peer-to-peer -peer method, transmit the information further to their peers as the other refugees. And I'm hoping to implement this next month. And if it's successful, I can do this again next semester as part of this NGO. So, as I'm getting to my conclusion, I just want to say that I know this room is full of a lot of ideas and a lot of really amazing minds. And I need a lot of ideas now and a lot of amazing minds to help me because this is so hard and I want to do this in the best way possible. So I'm really looking forward to your advice and your contributions. And thank you very much for your time.